Hi, Roy here on my channel, Roy Reads Anything, anything including the introductions to sword and sorcery books. So this having been Sumerian September, a bunch of us have been reading the, uh, the Conan stories written by Robert E. Howard in fantastic editions like this where you get authoritative versions of those texts which is great but those of us from an earlier era were didn't have those books we we were drip fed the Robert E. Howard stories along with other stuff in paperbacks like these which were edited and in some senses partly written by El Sprague de Camp, Lynn Carter and others as well as Robert E. Howard and they had quite a lot of sort of packaging around the stories and it's that I'm going to talk about. So those of us who seized upon these as they came out in the 60s and 70s would avidly read every single word you know I probably read the copyright statements but certainly read the introductions so it's the introductions that were telling us young people coming to sword and sorcery for the first time telling us what it was all about so you would get sort of positive statements like um, talking about the Conan stories um, tales unsurpassed for vivid colorful headlong gripping action the Conan stories are the ultimate in tales of swashbuckling adventure with a strong and sinister flavour of the supernatural, which is fair enough. So they're kind of doing a selling job on a, on a new genre, really. Um, now, one interesting thing about that is the way it was presented was somewhat um, gendered. I think there's an assumption that the readers would be male. Um, for instance, when Lynn Carter in one of his introductions invites us to, um, you know, having to, having talked about literature that is um, more about sort of real world issues, I see no reason why we should fill our every waking hour with brooding over the evils of the day. At least you will admit it's fun to lean back in a comfortable chair on a cold rainy evening, light a pipe set a chill martini glass beside the ashtray and escape into the pages of an extravagant romance, if only for an hour or two. That was indeed my teenagehood. Yeah. <laughs> the, the pipe, definitely. So there you go. Yeah. Um, Not so keen on the martini. May, so maybe, maybe that wasn't gendered at all then. More a pint of my Pipes. Woman. Pipes are for everybody. Pipes are for everybody. Um... And you'd also get a sort of positioning of the... So that we got this great thing for us guys to read, Sword and Sorcery. And that's being positioned against other types of subject matter you could have. And it's that I'm going to talk about. The sort of what is, what is it you don't get in Sword and Sorcery? What's it giving you? You know, if this is escapism, what are we supposed to be escaping from? So in one of the intros, John D. Clark suggests that... You know, you, you might not want to read this Conan book. You might want to read something, in quotes, close to the soil, concerned with psychopathology or the state of the world. So perhaps we want to go and crawl, curl up with a copy of Crime and Punishment. Um, <laughs> as one does. Instead of reading the Conan book. Um, so, but more commonly... In these intros, you would get uh, some variation on, on this text. So the intros are fairly repetitive, you know, because they're doing the same job, assuming you might be a brand new reader who's not read the other books, uh, telling us who was Robert E. Howard, uh, what kind of stories are these, as well as uh, stuff like where's the character up to in his, in his life, that kind of thing. How would you like to go to a world where men are mighty? Women are beautiful, problems are simple, and life is adventurous. Mm. Where gleaming cities raise their shining spires against the stars, sorcerers cast sinister spells from subterranean lairs, baleful spirits stalk crumbling ruins of hoary antiquity, primeval monsters crash through jungle thickets, and the fate of kingdoms is balanced on the bloody blades of broadswords brandished. 
by heroes of preternatural might and valour, and where nobody nobody so much as mentions the income tax or the school dropout problem or atmospheric pollution. So we've got something that is about the gleaming cities and the baleful sorcerers and things like that, and not about, the, so we've got these things that we're, these are the things we don't want to be hearing about, income tax, dropout problem, atmospheric pollution. And it occurred to me that those, what those things are varies from intro to intro. So I've put them all together to make a sort of found poem of the things that sword and sorcery isn't. So, here we go. Found poem. Inflation. The petroleum shortage. Atmospheric pollution. Income tax. The dropout problem. Socialised medicine. Commuter trains. Campus riots. Midi skirts. Detergent commercials. Spiro T. Agnew speeches. <laughs> Freeze-dried coffee, electric toothbrushes, draft dodgers, women's lib, the Los Angeles freeway, television talk shows, pornographic movies from Denmark. So that is the found poem of (laughs) things that sword and sorcery isn't. And it does occur to me it'd be a great challenge for an author to write a sword and sorcery book or indeed any book that includes all of those things. The freeze-dried coffee, the electric Electric toothbrushes, um, Spiro T. Agnew, that was confusing to a 14-year-old boy in England, Um, etc, etc. I mean, some of it's happened, you know, you've got plenty of... um, Sword and sorcery with a feminist slant. You may or may not smoke a pipe while you're reading in amongst the fantastic worlds of uh, the new sword and sorcery. Anyway, I just wanted to do that because, um, you know, this is what I was brought up to think you should be escaping from into your Conan books. Okay, so back back to the real thing as Sumerian September's still happening. I'll be back soon with something else. Thank you very much.